Uh, also, a lot has been said in regards to uh, increasing density. And I'm wondering, how does this impact like uh, the outlying regions of Regina? Uh, maybe you can speak to that, like what sort of changes are proposed that would impact that, the outlying regions to uh, reduce urban sprawl uh, and increase the density of life in uh, the central area of, of Regina? Sure. So it was a compound question. So the first question was uh, bicycle parking. Uh, so what, what's proposed in this zoning bylaw is that if you're in a multi-unit building over 20 units, uh, you we would be multi multi-unit residential building. We would be looking for bicycle parking, um, and then there would be bicycle parking requirements for all commercial and industrial uses. Uh, the second question, does that answer your first question? Okay. Second question was with regard to intensification and density. Uh, so uh, density can be a bit of a sensitive word. Uh, intensification. Uh, so what we try to include in this proposed bylaw is what we like to call as gentle intensification. <laughs> um, because we know neighborhood plans are coming and there needs to be that conversation about where intensification makes sense in each neighborhood. Because each neighborhood, we're going out to all 10 wards. Everybody has something a little a slightly different perspective on it. So um, what we've included in this with regard to that gentle intensification is allowing for two units um, in uh, neighborhoods that were predominantly one. Um, we figure if we just add one more, we might not be too disruptive, but if we were to jump from one to allowing 10 units or you know, multi-unit buildings, that might not work across the board. We need that, that dialogue and discussion at the neighborhood plan level. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, we're trying to allow for more letting apartment buildings be permitted um, in certain areas. So we're trying to create the environment where the more, more denser building types are allowed in more areas. Uh, but again, we do want the neighborhood plans to really drive specific, lot specific intensification because that is a broader conversation. And the zoning, we don't want to just kind of blanket it uh, and it not be the right fit for each neighborhood. And then you can just add to because you were asking about outside. Into the, so we have green field developments like Harbor Land and Green Run Garden and Cooperstown and our Earth Free. So as I said, the OCP is 70% of new like new population will, will go into the green field and 30% will go in. So we do have density requirements of 50 per, minimum 50 persons per hectare on the periphery um, in order to try and limit um, sprawl. Um, obviously, we have no jurisdiction outside of our own boundaries, uh, but we do work with our neighbors. We have regional partners that we talk about uh, their impacts onto our infrastructure systems, like our transportation specifically, um, because they're all community and uh, they're a bit of a community. So we are having these conversations with them. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Hi, I'm John. Um, I've got some comments about. Um, walkability or complete communities, as you would also call them. Uh, I think one of the th important things that we need to do with this is to uh, be able to drop a pin on the map in Regina and say that if you can't get to all of your complete community features within a 20 minute walk, then it doesn't meet the uh, OCP objectives. And so, it should just be a pin test. You could drop a pin and test it. I think it would be a, a way, easy way to gauge whether you're being successful in, in laying out what needs to be put where and what you're going to allow and what you're not going to allow. Um, I know lots of people don't want to allow certain things. I think we maybe have to be open to the idea that we need to allow a lot of things that we aren't used to seeing in certain places just to make a complete community and maybe make a community that's resilient enough to survive climate change. Um, because I'm thinking where I am in, I'm on the extreme east end of Broadway Avenue, trapped by Arcola Avenue on the north, the ring road on the east, and to the south, um, a row of houses that you have to go around because it's in a, a bay. Um, and then you get to a park, which it would be nice if you could just walk straight into, but there's houses in the way right there. So there's not enough spaces for people to walk and bike through even if we wanted to improve the walkability of the neighborhood so that sort of change needs to be considered um, one other point i think we're 
talking recently about whether to ban cars on lawns. I think it's easier instead of banning cars on lawns to just ban lawns. Get discussion going because maybe we can't afford to grow lawns anymore in a semi-arid desert where we might face a massive drought and maybe we'll lose our drinking water within the next 30 years because the glaciers in the Rockies will disappear and property values could suffer from that. So, I mean, we need to start planning for these sort of things. We've got a 25-year plan and we've got 12 years given to us left by our world's best scientists. So we've, we're going to have to think outside the box quite a bit more. Thanks. Yeah, just as a note on the landscaping and landscaping regulations, we're just approved by council for one to unit dwellings. And um, to your point, we do, uh, within those regulations, have grass is an option, but we also encourage landscaping and those sorts of things that are also more sustainable for our career systems and those sorts of things. So we yeah, have been looking at that. So, and that will be incorporated into the new, into the proposed bylaw. Hi there, I'm, I'm Bill, and uh, I have an opportunity to 